Divine True Spirit Discussions. These are discussions with people who have lived on earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. Jesus talks to Philippa, an earthbound spirit woman interested in healing, through an intermediary and to Kloboka. This discussion was recorded on the 4th of June 2014 in Wilsdale, Queensland, Australia. So I'm here with Anto again today. Hello, G'day, Anto. How are you doing? Yeah, quite good. <laughs> we've decided to do some more channeling today, and so uh, that's what we're going to do. There were some spirits who missed out yesterday from talking to us, so we decided mm. to make a bit of time for them today and talk to them today. So that's what we're going to do. Yeah, I became aware of them two days ago. Yeah. And um, through my guide, Pauline. Yeah. I don't have too much details. All I know is they're very anxious. I keep seeing different women stepping up to talk, and then they just all bail. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, yeah. Um, so there's different women who would like to talk, but they, each one of them get a bit afraid to be the spokesman. That's right. At the moment they are. So I've gone through four different names at yeah. the moment. So yeah. um, I'll just ask Pauline. Yeah. They're still deciding. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd like to just gratefully thank you, yeah. you know, for the opportunity for these women to be able to meet yeah. with you and talk with you. Yeah, my pleasure, Pauline. Mm. I have invited two, two women. Yeah. I'm just waiting. But they just need a bit of time. Yeah. Their heart is beating quite. Yeah. Hmm. If I can maybe help with their fear, they, they don't need to be so afraid. We, we, we'll just have a discussion and they can leave the discussion at any time they like. And hmm. uh, generally I'm pretty gentle with people, so I'm sure they, they'll be fine in the discussion. Okay. I have one. Yes. Her name is Philippa. Philippa? Mm. Yeah. Welcome, Philippa. Hello. Hello. I don't know what happened to me. <laughs> With regard to? This anxiety just arrived. Right. You weren't anxious before then? No, I'm not an anxious person right. by nature. Yeah. I'm very, how would you say? Calm. Very calm, <laughs> very collected, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know what transpired. I mean, I was looking forward to listening to my other friends talk to you. Yeah. And they just all bailed, as, <laughs> as the words that were used. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Something arrived within them and mm -hmm. they just felt very uncomfortable. Could and you I, feel the feeling that arrived? What was the feeling? It's, it is a fear. Yes. I never attributed to that, but yeah. I've been told by this lovely lady that it's, it's fear. It's a fear, yeah. It's a fear. Do you know what you're afraid of? Hmm. <laughs> she has stated it, but the fear of truth. Yeah, yeah. That's correct. That's what you've been afraid of. The f being afraid of... You're afraid of receiving a truth and then having to change your life as a result of that truth. Hmm. May I suggest to you, though, that it's actually worse to stay in error than it is to receive the truth? So you have nothing to fear from the truth. You have, if there's any fear, fear has been caused by the error. And I, and I always thought I was a truth seeker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it has caught me by surprise. Yes. Yeah. It's very hard to be a truth seeker when we're afraid of some truths. Can you see that? What fear does is it has the effect of pushing away the truth from us. Well, I don't necessarily see that. I've mm. never considered it in that manner or mm. that fashion. Mm. I've acted always upon what I felt I would wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. But the problem is that if we're, not a, if we're not aware of the fear that exists within us, then the fear precludes truth from entering us. Does that make sense? So if we're afraid of getting the truth about a certain subject, then the fear itself will stop us from seeking the truth on that subject. Mm. We had a... Mm, I am confused. <laughs> you had a subject in mind, so do you want to go to the subject We in all mind? had a subject in mind. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the subject of truth. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, maybe it is. Maybe it is. Let's I have a feeling that this context is, <laughs> surrounds the entire issue. Exactly. Mm. So let's talk about the subject you came to speak about, and then maybe we can talk a little bit more about the effect of truth and error. You acknowledge us. Mm -hmm. You see us, or do you feel us? I feel you. 
You yeah. feel me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you are slightly different to a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. So you're aware of what we've been undertaking mm -hmm. whilst we've been, whilst we are on Earth. Yes. When you say whilst you're on Earth, can I just talk to you a little about that? Um, you passed. All of you got together as a group after you've passed. Yes. Yes. And very few of you have spent any time or very little time in the spirit world. Um, that's correct. Yep. And you spent most of your time on Earth still. Yes. In the in the spirit form. Of different degrees and different time periods. Yes. Um, and some of you have spent it for hundreds of years, and some of you tens of years, and some of you just a few years. I'm probably the. I have low, less a degree of time that I've spent yep. with this group. Yep. How long have you spent with the group? At least 40 years. Right. Mm. So, so many of them have been there much longer. Much longer, yep. yes. And it's a group of women? We're all women. All women, yep. Correct. No, no men? No, there's no men. Mm. Mm. Have you None in no... disguise, no. <laughs> None in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> and have you, have you noticed that before? No. Hmm. That's interesting as well. Yeah, it's an interesting question. Yeah. We may maybe talk about that depending on whether we get to your real subject that you wanted to talk about or not. Hmm. But uh, let's talk about the real subject you came to talk about. Yes. Well, as you're aware, we're, we feel we're assisting people yes. on Earth. Yes. And one of my friends, one of my colleagues mm -hmm. has embarked on, how would, she, how would we say? She's a little bit rebellious in the group. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she goes and explores on her own and then she comes back to us and says, I've discovered this, I've discovered that, let's go and have a look at that. Yeah. So she's a, she started off as having a tiny voice in our group yeah. and now she's a lot more predominant yeah. you know, in, her, in her stance. Yeah. And what has she been discovering? Well... We assist people to learn to heal. When you say you assist people to heal? Well, we're assisting in people to learn about themselves as to how what we know yeah. um, and what we're discovering, yep. we're assisting and attempting to guide them in a way. And are most of these people men or women or both? Or? A few have connected to certain men, yep. but that is far yeah. and few between. Yep. <clears throat> so majority of us is all, all connecting with women right yeah. of significance of a certain character shall we call it when you say a certain character the kind of character you're looking for is someone who's very similar to us that has we have determined that there requires to be a rapport of some nature that is a true. connectivity yeah and, and what's we, the similar characters or personality traits that you're looking for well we felt that that person would have a caring nature yeah had wanted to help someone, yeah. had an ability to connect to us. Yeah. So may not necessarily be aware of us yes. individually, but, but, but uh, ability, aware of us yeah. as... Yeah, Basically as, the ability to hear you, correct. even though they're not aware that they're hearing you. Yes, yeah. and that has to be a primary character, otherwise... Otherwise, what's the point? It's yeah. null and void. We yeah. have no capacity to connect with them. Yeah, correct. And there are other synergies that we feel with them yes we don't necessarily understand those feelings but yeah you just get drawn to that person yes <laughs> um, i understand hmm. and they all have reached a point in their lives where they are focused on working with individuals so they provide all forms of you know hands-on healing or a non how would you call it? Non-scientific base. It's it's so, it, so more le it's more or less not necessarily the accepted medical practices, but more to do with what you would classify as more holistic practices. Holistic, pra pra yes, practices. Mm. And th there are new terminologies being used in this current age, mm -hmm. which were not used before, mm -hmm. and. We are slanting towards that med modalities, any type of modalities yeah. that relate to assisting a person to understand their true nature right. and how to heal through the energy that we provide through to them. Yes. Mm. And, how, and, and why have you been drawn to, to talk with us? Yeah. 
Well, my friend Kat Katrina. Mm -hmm. The she, investigative one? The, yeah, the, yes, the, the investigative one. one. <laughs> yeah. She would love to have a voice. Sure. And you could ask her a couple of questions yourself if you wish. Mm -hmm. But she stumbled upon a group mm -hmm. most recently. Yes. And they were referring to what they were calling divine love. Yeah. Now, we don't see those people with you. Yeah. However, Pauline, this, this lady, stated, if you would like to speak to someone who truly understands what divine love is mm -hmm. and how true love heals and the entire process, you're more welcome to attend and meet with you. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, you have this knowledge. Mm -hmm. So, hence, here we are. No worries. And we only embarked on this two days prior. Right. Mm. So you met up with this other group two days ago? Well, Katrina has met up with this group a week ago. Yeah. A week and a few days. Mm -hmm. And she has been examining a few things. Mm -hmm. And she's saying that what we are doing is not assisting anyone. Mm -hmm. And yet, in the same fashion, she sees that those other people potentially are not doing the same. <laughs> They're not assisting anyone either. They're not assisting anyone either. Yeah. And she's confused, why are they referring to this rhetoric term that is coming from people, mm -hmm. but they are associating it with some external yeah. feelings. And, and that, where was this group located? Was it in Australia or overseas? In Australia. Here in Australia. Here in Australia. We are, yeah. we are working predominantly in Queensland. Yeah. There are many people in this region who are interested in who these in, kind of in, things. Yes, who yeah. prefer to provide these type of modalities. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So what you're saying is the group that you originally met or that Katrina originally met was a group of people, were they mostly women? No, they were, uh, yes, mixed. they are mostly women, mostly yeah. women but there uh, are some influential group. males yeah. in the group. Yeah. And uh, they were getting together? They're obviously. getting together with other people. With other people, mm -hmm. attempting to heal other people. They believe that they are doing true healing. Right. And that annoyed me. Right, because they weren't. They weren't. There were just other people with them yeah. in disguise. Yeah. And they were attributing it to this, as I said, this rhetoric concept of yeah. divine, divine love. Divine love, yeah. Not divine truth. They were actually using divine the word love. divine love. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And Katrina is just fascinated by this. Yeah. How can someone misinterpret what is being given to them by another? And then something sparked within her, the question of perhaps there is another M modality, if modality you like. <laughs> that may exist, <laughs> yep. that they have stumbled upon a word that has some meaning, yeah. but we're unable to determine what that is. And they also don't know themselves what it is. They obviously don't know what, the, <laughs> what it is. Yes. They may extrapolate it, they yep. may voice it and I, I we have also briefly attended but because there are so many competing interests for these people i felt did not feel like i wanted to stay yeah so i returned returned back to to the group yeah and and then somehow whilst i was talking to the rest of the group Pauline, this woman, appeared before us. Mm -hmm. And she said that she has elements, of expressions of this love mm -hmm. that is the true, the true divine love mm -hmm. that everyone can receive. Mm -hmm. so, so it's a little confusing, isn't it? Because on one hand, you've got a group of people on earth claiming to use divine love to heal other people, but they're not. Yes. And you can see they're not healing other people. All you can see is that spirits who are involved with all of the interactions with those people. 100%. Yeah. And you can see that all they're, do all they're doing is really the spirits are just feeding certain addictions and making the people feel good. And that there's the, the numbers of spirits, it's, the number of people is, is, <laughs> is insurmountable. It, it requires a lot of effort for them to do what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So they're using a lot of spirits to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Because, of course, they don't have the personal power to do it. And, you know, some of them had the gumption to speak to me about this. Right. And, and some of those spirits. Some of those spirits. And yeah. say that they are doing this. <laughs> and no, they are not. Yeah. And 
you know, I am very stern in what I understand. Yeah. And it's different. I can see what you're doing. Yeah. You know, you cannot pull this, pull the... Wool over your eyes. Wool over your eyes, yes. <laughs> and I love that term, but that's true. Yeah. You can do that with people on earth. You can. But Pauline, now that's a different matter. Because she looks different. She looks different. And then she disappears. And where does she go? Where does she go? She does things that we are unable able to, to understand. Do. Yeah. So there must be... So she is obviously very different to the spirits that surround this other group of people. Yes. So, so she is a person who is developed in love, obviously. You can feel she's very loving. But she says she is not a true expression of this love. Yeah, she's not yet at one with God with, the, with that love is what I would quote term it. Mm. Would you like to see a person who is? Yes, why not? Well, how about I just ask somebody to come? Oh, it's a male. Mm -hmm. So what's his name? It's very hard to be in his presence. Why is it hard? He's so bright. Yes. Well, what if we ask him to just tone down his brightness a bit for you? Let's do that. Is that better? Mm. Yeah. Can you see that he can't be his normal self around you without you feeling overwhelmed? It's very overwhelming. Why, yeah. why is that so? And it's his emotionally. Name is, his name is John. Yeah. Hmm. And it's emotionally overwhelming, isn't it? It's very emotionally overwhelming. <clears throat> mm -hmm. It creates instant pain. Mm -hmm. But I'm drawn to him for some reason. Mm -hmm. Why do not? Why do we not react to him as we would with others? With other males? Mm. Because he has a lot of love in him. So so, and it's a different type of love than the love you've been. You, that you believe in or even know. And that's why it feels a bit confronting. He says that we, he has seen us before. Mm -hmm. He visits many on earth. Yeah. You are friends, apparently. Yes, yep. Mm. Now, John's not yet at one with God either. Wow. What does that term mean? Well, it depends, you see. With John, it's a bit different because you've got John in different forms. Unfortunately, it's a bit confusing and perhaps what we need to do is just sort of get back to some basic principles about the soul and the spirit body and the physical body and so forth first. Is that okay with you? So yeah. could you answer one small question yeah. before we proceed? Yep. Yeah. These people have received this actual, what they term divine love. Yes. But why do they have a different expression of that? Because they have different amounts of it. So Pauline has a lesser amount of it and John has a greater amount of it. Mm. But it's nonetheless the same love. Mm. It has the same flavour or quality, doesn't it? You can feel that. Mm. And it does exist. Mm -hmm. It does. It's God's love. So why do I call it a rhetoric concept? Well, because many people on earth are using it as a rhetoric concept. So, you know, they read something in a book and they read about divine love and then they think they're actually engaged with God in this, in this way, but the reality is they're not. So when you see that occurring, you can see there's nothing happening aside from engagement with spirits. And, and so you, you can see, oh, it's just another rhetoric, right? But in the case of John and Pauline, you can see there's a quality of their soul that's completely different, right? Some of the people I have seen have a little bit of this. Some of the people, yes. Because mm. yep. mm. they've received some of God's love. And then others, but others are fooled about it, right? They, don't, they think they use the terminology of it, yes. but they don't they don't really understand it and they don't they certainly haven't felt it and it's certainly not in them. You can feel that it's not in them. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, there's a number of issues I'd probably like to talk with you about if that's okay with you. Mm. Right. And I still don't understand how this addresses my question. Yep. Yep. Mm. Um, firstly, it's important for you to understand that what, what I, I would basically, if I could place you in a group of people, <laughs> And I don't necessarily like doing this, but, but it just from the help of terminology, 
you are a group of women who have primarily bound to the earth. In other words, you spend most of your time on earth attempting to help people on earth. Correct. Okay. Now, if you don't know how to help people, then can you be helping people is the first question that I need to ask you. You see, you see the, problem, the problem on earth, as you know, is that a lot of people don't know the truth, right? Hmm. They, Many truths. Many yes. truths, yeah. And you, you've now discovered some of these truths just by being a spirit. Yeah, I, which I never knew. Exactly. Truthful. So when you on earth, you didn't probably believe very much in the spirit world? No, I didn't believe in its existence. So you didn't believe in life after death? No. And yet you're now living a life after your death. <laughs> which is amazing. Which is amazing. And it's more amazing even than the life you had before. Which motivates me to assist people, which I believe is assisting people. Of course. Of course you want to assist people to understand that basic truth. Because mm, now I have some value. Yeah. And so you definitely want to pe tell people, right, that there is a life after death. Yes. And that death isn't the last or the end of it. It's very important because... Yeah, because a lot of people make a lot of bad decisions because they're afraid of death. And if they didn't make those decisions, they wouldn't, they'd be in our spirit world probably enjoying a better life. <laughs> and they would have had a better life on earth. Of course. Mm. Yeah, because they weren't, wouldn't have been driven so much by their fear. That's right. Yeah. So, so you can see that just knowing that one truth, that there is no such thing really as death, has helped you immensely. Yes. It's reduced a lot of your fears. It's made a lot of your beliefs go away that you had before. Mm -hmm. You've accepted some new beliefs as a result of that one change. Mm. Yeah. Can you see that if that one change has caused so much change of truth in you, can you see that if you made many hundreds or even thousands of changes, that there would be immense changes that you could probably talk about in terms of truth? Mm, can I, you see that? I can see that, yes. From a logical perspective, that makes sense, doesn't it? Mm. Now, if you could learn a lot more about the world in which you live, right? and mm. I'm not now talking just about the earth that you surround most of the time, but rather the places beyond the earth, then can you also see that once you learn about those particular places, you would have a lot more to share with people on earth? If those places exist. It, of course, if those places exist, yes. Mm, yes. Um, but Conceptually, where, I agree. Yes. So where does Pauline go? Hence the question. <laughs> she must go to some other place that does exist. Or we just haven't got the capacity to follow her. Correct. But there is some other place that she goes to that you can't go to. Mm. Okay. And you're aware of this place? Of course. Okay. Yeah. Now, what that means then is that there's whole, you could say, whole universes for you to discover that you've yet to discover. Mm. And while you remain bound to the earth trying to help people on earth, without discovering those things, there is little that you can share about those things with the people on earth. Well, that's right. I wouldn't have the knowledge. Correct. So can you see that it's very important for you to start to develop a desire to gain that knowledge? Mm. Yes. Uh, if you want to really help people, mm. then it's very important you gain a lot more knowledge. So the real question then becomes is how do you do that? And what have we been doing then? Well, you've been sharing what you've discovered through your personal experience. Mm. Is that not true? Yes. Yeah. But there's a lot that you have not yet personally experienced. Okay. All right. That these people in front of you, John and Pauline, have personally experienced. Mm. And so they have the ability to share a lot more. Mm. And so if you're going to have a really positive effect on the people on earth who you're attempting to assist you're going to need to learn a lot more. Yes. Mm. And that's going to require not only spending time here on Earth, but also spending time in other places. Mm. If those places exist. If those places exist, <laughs> yes. But it does sound quite attractive, what you say. Mm. Now, you've learnt in the transformation that you've had from death to the spirit world, you've learnt that there's a whole heap of things that you didn't know on earth that you now know. Mm. And you could pretty much assume, couldn't you then, that if Pauline and John are going to other places that you can't follow them to, 
but they were obviously going somewhere, that it would make sense that in those places there'd be more things that you could learn and know. Yes, correct. And therefore share more things with the people that are on earth. Oh. Hmm. That's led me to a belief, uh, a thought. Yeah. So if I don't have that knowledge, yes. am I teaching something that is incorrect? That's the problem, isn't it? We don't know until we've discovered what the knowledge is that we're missing out on. Does that make sense? Hmm. And this is a problem with sharing with people what you believe truth to be without fully discovering truth yourself. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. Because you could be sharing things that are not completely true. They're just a part of the truth that the you've discovered. That, yes, to the extent that I know. Yes. Hmm. But, but obviously the people that are standing in front of you know a lot more. But that's slightly different to the other people that I've witnessed yes. who are teaching something they do not Correct. know. And this is a problem on earth, isn't it? On earth and in the spirit world, in the lower spheres of the spirit world, they are littered with places and people who are teaching things they've had no personal experience of. Hmm. So, so you can feel what I've learned yes. in terms of about the body yes. and about these different the energetic body. healing modalities. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Yeah. And, and the interaction between the spirit body and the physical body. Yes. But there's a whole other part that you haven't know, learned about yet, and that's the soul. No, I have not heard of that term. Yeah. And the soul is completely different to the spirit body and completely different to the physical body and controls both. Hmm. And this is why sometimes your healing hasn't been effective. Well, we are starting to see the consequences of that. Yeah. So sometimes you spend a lot of time and energy trying to heal somebody, right? Yes. And then you find that there's a temporary benefit. It's temporary. We can see it. Yeah. But the person who we're working through yeah. does not see that. Yes. Because they may not see that person come back to them. Yes. And also the person that you're working through often doesn't understand anyway. No. Even what you understand. They so think how, they do. They think they do, but they don't. And, and so how can they really help? Well, a lot of the times they don't even believe it's us there. In, Correct. A lot of the, times they think it's them that's doing it and yes. it's not. Mm. That you know it's not and everybody else knows it's not, but they think it's them. Mm. Right? And eventually you have enough of that and you go to another person. <laughs> of course, because they're arrogant, right? Yes. And it's very difficult to work with an arrogant person. And then, yeah, it does. It precludes you from being able to work with them. Yeah, it stops you from sharing more that you could share, right? Mm. Yep. Things that we keep learning about. Yes, of course. Mm. Now, now, in this process, so what you're doing is you're trying to find humble people on earth. And unfortunately, in the healing industry, there is not a lot of humble people, as you know. No, there are more up, new up-and-comers, as we call them. Yes, yeah, the ones that are new to it. Yeah, much younger. Yeah, much younger. Who are open to it now. And they're a bit more open to it, right? Mm. And they're also open to the concept that they're being helped. Yes. Aren't they? Rather yeah. than them being some key part of or key player. And as you know, you've been using the, their body's energy to heal the person. Yeah, like the people are changing. They are more sensitive. Yes. No, that's true. Mm. That's true. Now, in this process, what's happening, though, is that you often attempt to heal the patient, shall we call them. Yes. And, and you notice a slight improvement in their spirit body, a slight increase of the brightness of the spirit body in the location where they have their problem. And they feel relief. And they feel some relief. Yes. But then when they go away, the problem seems to reoccur. Yeah, quite annoyingly. Yeah, and this happens all the time. Yes. And there's been no time, in fact, if you think about it, where the problem hasn't reoccurred. There has been a situation. Right. And that's when the person who was there left that person. When the person who was there... Explained. There was another person there. There was other individuals attached to that oh, person. Oh, you're talking about spirit attachments now? Yes. Yes. Of course they will be permanent. I'm talking about stuff that's not related to spirit attachment. As you know, a lot of physical illness in the physical body is caused by spirit attachment. Yes. And if you get the spirit who's attached to the person to leave, then of course they will, there will be an immediate benefit. And we can assist in that too. And of course you can assist in that, mm. yes. But, but aside from that, all of the other instances, there's been no permanent benefit. Yeah, it is a regret to admit to that. Yeah. So, so you're spending a lot of energy Very. to do something that isn't permanent, that's temporary. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> 
It's okay to accept the truth of it. You see, this is a part of your scientific investigation, is to look at the truth of what's happening and to see whether there's something we can change to make it more permanent. But I still find that to be a value. Yes, why do you find it to be a value? Because the person is a, may become aware of something that they were not aware. True. Um, True. But can you see in a way you're almost feeding some of your own addictions to feel good about the fact that you've done something? Yes. I, I like to feel good about this. Yeah, I understand. But, but if we are honest about the situation, in the majority of cases there's no permanent benefit. Hmm. Yeah, it negates the, the true result, doesn't it? Exactly, hmm. exactly. And in some ways you would have to then question whether your own motivation isn't partially to do with the fact that you get a benefit, and that is you get to feel better about yourself from helping somebody. Yeah, I never considered never thought of that. that. Hmm. Hmm. That's something to consider, but that's an aside of where I wanted to go. Hmm. That's okay. So, so then what you've done is you've gone to a group of people on earth who claimed to be using divine love to heal people. Yes. And you, what you've noticed is all they're doing is using spirits to have codependent addictions with people. Yes. To get, give people energy and get energy from people. And people still feel this temporary feeling. Of course, because they have an addiction, Matt. But that feels good. It, it feels great. Yeah. But they also take home some of these people with them. And that's very damaging. That's damaging. Yeah. And... The euphoria of the feeling may last a little bit longer than what we are able to provide. My primarily though, because the euphoria is generated by the fact that the person on earth is getting their addiction met through the interaction with the spirit. In other words, the spirits are giving them energy that the person on earth wants, right? But it's not healing. But the person loves it. Of course they love it. And then they want more of it. Of course. And this is how often people on earth become more and more attached to spirits because they get nicer, nice, these so-called nice feelings from spirits and they become attached to those spirits and before they know it, they've become overcloaked by those spirits and then you've got an additional problem, which is the person, the spirits are now interfering with different parts of the person's body and so forth and there's all these other problems associated with that, right? And then they, they have a motive to do what the spirits want them to do. Of course. Which, hmm. and this is why the spirits do it, because the spirits are being selfish hmm. and they only have selfish motiv motivations with the people on earth. In a way, probably what we do. <laughs> well, you're less selfish, shall we say, because you don't want to overcloak the people. No, I don't you, want to overcloak. You don't want to. You don't want to. You know, impact upon their rest of their life. You don't want to suck from them all the time. No. Right. You do want to have some emotions of feeling good about yourself for doing it. Mm. But aside from that, you you're far more purely motivated than many of these darker spirits. I want to have my own life and my own experiences. Of course. Mm. Of course. And there's so many other people to meet. Yeah. Why yeah, would I is. want to stay with one person alone? Of course. <laughs> now, if you have also observed with these spirits that you notice doing this, that as the, they connect with the person who's on earth, the spirit themselves gets darker. Have you noticed that? Yes, I have. Yeah. Mm. So, so, and you also notice that the person on earth is getting darker, even though they feel good. They get more aggressive as well. They get angry. Mm. Yep. And the... The intention changes. Correct. So, yeah. they, so, so can you see that it is a very negative and unloving influence that these spirits are exhibiting over that person, even though they're doing it in the name of divine love? In a way, I have observed that with people that we've worked with, yes. as I stated to you. Of course. They initially start off in a... a humble place. In a humble place. Yeah. And they believe that they are doing these things for themselves, and then they end up with other people attached to them. Yes. And, and then you have to leave them because they're not in the space where they can do the work anymore. Yes, mm -hmm. and it has caught the attention of a few of us. Yes. But we have not explored why that's been the case. Okay, so these are all very important things to understand, aren't they? If yes. you think about it. Mm. So, so let's summarise the things that we're noticing. We're noticing, firstly, so you as a group have been noticing, that firstly, when you do healings on people on Earth, and you use a medium, you know, your medium to do it, your person who's doing the healing on earth to do that with the patient, let's call the patient and the therapist. Yes, that's so what I'd like to. you're using a therapist to heal a patient and you find that the therapist sometimes gets in a very arrogant place and eventually you've got to go away from them mm. and you, because they believe they're doing it themselves when they're not. And you also can observe that the patient is often uh, feeling better temporarily 
And the only time they've ever felt better permanently was when a spirit was removed from them. Mm. But, but the rest of the time, they've only felt better temporarily. And at times they even get worse. Yes. Mm. Yep. Yep. So you've noticed that? Yes, I have. Then you've gone to this other group and investigated this other group who claims there's this divine love. And you've noticed pretty much a worse thing occurring, which is darker spirits mm. feeding the addictive desires of people on earth, just like a drunk on earth is fed by the, a, a, a drunk spirit. Yes. In the same way. And they call it divine love. Well, they even attribute it to God or to love. To love. And it's it, not loving at all. It's not loving because you can feel the person who's there. It is not yeah. a loving person. No, it's not a loving person. And also the spirit's not loving. Mm. The person on earth is not being loving. All of them involved are all getting their addictions met. And all of them are getting darker, even though they're talking about it being divine love. Everyone gets darker. Yeah. It's very sad, isn't it? Mm. So there's a no, that's a situation. That's no, that's no good. That's no good. That's worse than the situations you've been involved in. Yes. These are your observations so far. Yes. And the third observation we've made now is that we've got John here and we've got Pauline here, who are obviously in a completely different state than any other spirit you've met at this point. Yes. And the question then becomes, well, how do they get into this state? And where do they live? And they don't look like people we've seen on Earth. No, no don't look like anyone like anyone on Earth, do they? Yes. So, they, mm. so they're very much brighter mm. in their condition. Yes. Yep. So then the question becomes, well, there's, there's got to be an answers about all of this that's going on that makes sense to all three situations. Hmm. Doesn't there? There has to be some logic to there it. There has to be some logical answer. As you've found in your own investigations up till now, you've found that there's many logical answers if you're willing to find them. Yes. Yep. So there must be a logical answer about this. Hmm. And you can feel and see that John and Pauline both talk about divine love the same way as this other group is getting darker talk about divine love, but John and Pauline are not dark. Hmm. They're very, very bright. In fact, John was so bright when he first came that that you had to tone down to even identify, to him, identify as a male. him as a male. Mm. Now, just for a moment, I'll get John to show his true amount of energy to you. But I warn you, you might need to close your eyes eventually. So he'll just slowly ramp it up to his true amount of energy. He needs to stop. Yeah, okay. He needs to stop. He yeah, hasn't even got anywhere near his true amount of energy yet. No, it's just, it's, that's pretty harmful. <laughs> it's bright, isn't it? It's too bright. It's too bright. But it's not just bright. Yeah. What's, what is it? There's an impact on me. And what's the impact? It hurts. Why does it hurt? I don't know. It just hurts. I feel very nervous again. Yeah. My heart's beating. Okay. Much. There's nothing to worry about here. It's just John, John's toned it back down already. So, you know, he, he, he will look after you. He, I wanted to show you that as an illustration of how bright he is and how much power he actually has. Oh, well, that's... That's much more immense than I've ever experienced. Exactly. And it's much, much more immense than the spirits that are with these group of people who are claiming to heal by divine love. Oh, these spirits don't have this power. No, not at all. In fact, they have to have thousands of spirits get together just to do anything. Yeah, to produce a twinkle. To, yeah, exactly. Mm. So, so there's obviously something here that's, that's real and there's obviously something here that's fake, isn't there? in the sense that the group that uh, is claiming to have divine love and yet are quite darker, darker than yourselves, and also who are getting have their addictions met through these spirits, um, this group is obviously not in the same condition as John and Pauline are in. Well, that's, that's correct. Yeah. And how do we measure that? I can measure it through what I see, but also now what I can feel. Yes. Now, the reason why you not only saw John go bright, but could feel how intense it was for you, is because your condition is very different to John's. Does that make sense? Yes. And John's condition is a, is a very intensely loving condition, and your condition is much less so. Why do you say it's an expression of love? Because... John wouldn't be capable of demonstrating his brightness without love. Right. Does that make sense? Yep. And the whole reason why he controls it. So love is associated with brightness. Yes. 
Now, what I'm going to get John to do is to go a long way away. All right? So let's ask him to go to where the moon is. Mm -hmm. All right? He moves pretty quickly. Yep, instantly, actually. Mm. Now I'm going to get him to up his brightness. Still impacts me. <laughs> Hard to understand. He's a long way away, isn't he? And yet it's so bright that the power of it just causes you to almost break down and cry. Eh? I don't understand you. That's okay. I want to explain all of these things to you. you right. I feel like I'm being tortured to a degree. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not being tortured. But I want to, what I wanted to show you is that there's a lot of things you haven't discovered yet. Does that oh. make sense? So let's bring John back. And tone him down so that he... <laughs> He's a lovely fellow. But he is a lovely fellow. But he causes so much harm. <laughs> he doesn't cause harm, actually. What, he's, what, what we've done is we've tried to demonstrate to you the real state of a person who's received divine love. Okay. Does that make sense? <sighs> and it's physically being able to be demonstrated. But if you receive this love, people won't be able to be... In in the presence of this individual, or any of these individuals. Well, you will only if you get into the same condition he's in, or if he tones down his condition. So he, he's in front of you now, so you're in his presence, and he's to had to tone down his condition in order to do so. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same as John. Okay. All right, you tell me when to stop. You can stop. Please stop. Yeah. As possible you do it on earth. I'm so confused. Well, it's because I've also received this, this love too. Does that make sense? But who healed you? Well, you could say that with John and myself and Pauline, that God healed us, which is very, very different than somebody healing us. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. Now, you haven't had a very strong definition of God before you passed from the world. Oh, no. I, it was God was everything, a, everything. Yeah, it was Existence. a loose concept of, shall we say, energy, if mm. you like. Very. Yeah. But, but John, myself and Pauline know that God is actually an entity, a being, whom we can receive love from. Hmm. And that love not only does it uh, heal us, if you like, but it also causes our soul to grow. But that goes against everything I know. Why does it go against everything you know? Because... I thought the entire creation was the essence of God. Of God, if you want to call it, yes. Yeah. So, so, so let's talk about some of these beliefs for a moment because they do interfere with your ability to experiment with this. So, uh, and what I'm going to pr propose in the end is an experiment that you can try. Okay. Does that make sense? But some of your belief systems cause you to, to not understand about God enough to uh, try some of these experiments, right? You could call me an atheist. Yeah. No, I, I have no religious demeanour at all. Yes, I understand that. Uh, except for this concept that there is some kind of universal energy that's loving. Yes. And that's uh, the way you've viewed it, isn't it? This yeah, universal some, loving energy. Yeah, that there's something there that we all, an expression of, have the essence of. Yes. And your belief systems could be said to be what are classified on Earth now as New Age belief systems or... Almost, uh, and they have a, a Buddhist or Hindu source, or particularly a Buddhist source, if yeah, you like. Almost more of a Taoist. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So, so you can see that um, with Taoism and, and with Buddhism, there is this concept that we can become gods. Yes. Or that we are actually a fragment of God. As we grow our energetic being. Yes. We end up with more chakras. With yes. more uh, energetic flow and yes. expression of that. Yes. Now, while it's true that your chakras and everything end up with more energy as you grow, how you grow is dependent upon how much love you express. Yes. Does that make sense to you? Yes, yep. that does. Now, 
what you're seeing in front of you with Pauline and John is different expressions of love. Now, some of the love that they express is so great that you can't bear it. Yes. Which means that you must not yet understand that kind of love. I have not received those teachings, obviously. Yes. And even the love that I expressed to you earlier, you could not bear. No. But I have not seen this in any Taoists or Buddhism or any other form of modality. Correct. And you won't. And there's a reason. But then they ascend to... Did these people ascend? They as... claimed to ascend. But there's a difference between a claim, as you know, and the truth. You see, the people on earth who are so-called receiving divine love, they're making the claim that they are, but they're not, are they? Yes, they claim they were ascended masters. And Correct. They have through different... And what's the reality of their claims? Well, when I investigated them, those who are on earth, mm -hmm. they've just got people around them. Exactly. They've got spirits attached to them, giving mm. them lots and lots of energy, right? And they don't actually... They actually don't understand what they're actually saying. Correct. Mm. They don't even have any understanding of the words they're using, let alone the actual meaning of them. And, and surprisingly, some of those people are actually so cloaked in a way at yes. the term that you've used yeah which is you can see the spirit mirroring the person yes, yes. and the person's aside they're, they're... they've stepped aside from themselves yes yes and we can talk to that person directly yes you have the, the spirit body of the person has stepped out yes and you've got what commonly talk, called nowadays walk-ins <laughs> yes where there's now a spirit who's overcloaked that person the spirit's using their body and the person's willingly let, letting them do that hmm. so i've wondered about ascended masters so i have researched that yeah and i've not found one on no earth. no there's none on earth so these people are not ascended masters no no and in fact in my opinion there's there's no such thing as an ascended master anyway what about an archangel well there's certainly things such as archangels or angels Hmm. Mm. We've you've, studied that. Yeah, you've got one in front of you. John. Oh. Hmm? You confuse me. <laughs> he was a man who lived on earth. Yes, he's a man. How can he be an angel? Yes. Every angel used to be a man or a woman on earth. You mean from the earth? From the earth. Born. Born on the earth. And grew into this condition. And grew into this condition by some kind of transformative change. So he did this on earth? He, did, he started this on earth and he continued it through the, his spirit life. Right. But still, that's a mean feat. Right. Perhaps if he gives you a picture of how he started it on earth. Hmm. He questioned things like I did. Yes. And what did he do? He believed in a God. Yeah. And that there was something that needed to come into him. Yeah. An and what, essence. And what caused him to believe these things? Sadness. Hmm. Many things. Yeah. He does not attribute it to one thing. Yeah. But he sought, yeah. he sought the love to enter into him, he says. Yeah. And what made him even think that it was possible? He met another yeah. who guided him. And he had feelings. He didn't do too much of that on earth. No. But since he arrived in the spirit world, he oh, tried it a lot more. He's confusing he? me. He's talking about being on earth with you. Yes. But he has many forms. Yes. So when, when did John and I first meet? When you were on earth 2,000 years ago. Correct. How's that possible? Well, it is possible because <laughs> I was on earth 2,000 years ago. But that's another story in itself. But what I'm illustrating is that somebody taught him that he could receive God's love into his soul. Uh, mm. And in the process of receiving God's love into his soul, his soul grew. Yes. He said he did grow on earth. Yeah. With this love. Yes. And then when he arrived in the spirit world, if he shows you a picture after he arrived, he was consumed by the entire process. Process. Yeah. And so he continued receiving love. Mm. In many forms. Yeah. He's, ex he's changed in many ways. He's changed in many ways, yeah. And mm. he kept growing and kept growing and kept growing. Then he made a, trans a, a transformation during the seventh and eighth dimensions of, or spheres of the spirit world. 
Can he show you that transformation just as a picture? Yes. In a way, he overcame what man could do for himself. Yes. And what was it all dependent on? The love that he receives and from? From God. From God. And nothing else and being nothing. within him that would prevent that from doing, from him doing so. Correct. So he had to release from himself things, feelings. anything, feelings that stopped him from feeling this love or for, prevented him from receiving the love. But if you did this, okay, if, he says you did it as well. If you, if you did this so long ago mm -hmm. on earth mm -hmm. and you're still here, mm -hmm. why are you hiding this? Why are you not <laughs> teaching this? That's what I'm doing. Otherwise you would never have met me. But no one else. I haven't come across other people like this. No, because most people don't even believe it exists, right? But this is sad. Yeah, it is. This is what I'm saying. It's sad when we don't know the truth, because when we don't know the truth, we can't teach it. You see what I'm saying? Oh, I see. You see, my, you see why I've taken you down this road? Yes, there's no point teaching something that's not truly true. Exactly, exactly. What we need to do is find out what is true first and then teach it with all your heart. But that's a difficult process because you have to go through so many things to get to that point where you... No, you don't. Not as many things as you think. Yeah, but I, I've lived on Earth. Yes. You know, I, I died of old age and then yes. arrived here and spent another 50 years here. But you never learnt about divine love in that time. No, I didn't. So it's taken me 100 years, so I've missed on the opportunity to learn things like this. Yes, you have. But it's only because most people on Earth are resistive to listening to it. So you're saying I was resistive to it? Yes. If you think back of the time when you first arrived in the spirit world, can you remember who came to you? No, I don't remember. What happened as soon as you passed? I felt some hands and I saw a bright person. Yeah, and what did you do? I got scared. Yeah. And then I and, felt... And what does fear do? Remember what we said right at the beginning? Oh, right. Fear stops you from accepting a truth. Yes. So you became afraid. I was afraid and then I went... I wanted to go back to where I was. Correct. So you got drawn back to the earth. I went straight back to my body. Yeah. And, and to yeah. my family. And to your family. And then these other group of women spirits surrounded you. Yes, they, they were there to comfort me. They were there to comfort you. Mm -hmm. But they were all earthbound. Yes. Whereas the other spirits who received you initially, the bright ones. I earth. forgot about them. Yeah, I know you did. Why, did why, why was that so? Because of the feelings you felt at the time. What did you feel at the time? Scared? I was terrified. You were terrified, right? I was terrified to die. Yeah. I mean, I, I thought that was it. Yeah. I wanted to hold on as long as I could. Yeah. Say some words to my family. Yeah. And you didn't realise at the time that these brighter spirits would have been able to help you understand all of that. Does that make sense? But I'd seen things when I went to sleep before I died. That made me scared too. Of course. Because they were things you didn't know about. See, every time we don't know the truth, it always makes us frightened. But dying is a scary thing. Well, it doesn't have to be. But it is. But it only is because we don't understand the truth about it when we're on earth. See, if we understood the truth about it, we wouldn't be so afraid of dying. Mm, I can see that. But everyone will have a different experience, I guess. Everyone does have a different experience, but nobody would be afraid of it so much if they knew the truth that they would still be alive afterwards. It would only be a temporary pain, if you like. In a way, I've still got f some feelings about that, Correct. about death. You've got some fears about death. I thought I was over this. No. Because I no longer have a body. Why would I be concerned about that? Well, because there's still emotion in you that you've been carrying around for the last 50 years. So all these emotions go back to, so I can't get rid of these things that I had on earth. You can, but not the way you've been trying. Okay. 
So you've been trying to get rid of them by denying them or by distancing yourself. Yeah, I thought they were gone. You thought they were gone. But the reality is they're still there. See, the process that John and Pauline and myself had to go through is we've had to accept the truth of our life and go through it emotionally. But he, you guys, you all would have accepted certain things that I never did when I was on earth. Mm -hmm. So it made it easier for you to understand what was happening when you died. Well, well would it be not? Not necessarily for John. If you ask him, he, he didn't have a firm view until after I passed. Oh. Yes. He was still in fear as well. Yeah. And it was only when I came to him after I passed mm. and talked to him that he started to realise that there was no such thing as death, right? Yes. So, now I feel like I've wasted my time being scared of something that should not have been so. Well, no, you see, your fear of death was created by your family, your upbringing. Everyone around you is, was a fear, afraid of death, if you think about it. Mm. You think about your family at the time of your death. Yeah, my husband didn't want me to go. Yeah. He was going to be by himself. Afraid. He was afraid. Thought, and what is his view of death? I haven't seen him. But what was his view of death at the time? Oh, the same as I did. Yeah. That's the eternal so, light's gone. Yeah. No God. No, no God. afterlife. No, we believed in nature. Yeah. Yeah, we're very similar. Yeah. So, for your husband, of course, he was afraid of death too. Yes. And then if you think of your family that you're brought up in, your mum and dad. They were slightly religious. Yeah. But still pretty afraid of death. Oh, but they were terrified of death. Yeah. Because they worried that it was either hell or heaven. Or... And they always <laughs> made sure that we looked after <laughs> ourselves not to... So we don't end up dying un yeah. unnecessarily. Yeah. So we lived a full life. Yeah. So they had quite a lot of fear of death, mm. even though they were religious. But they... Oh, that's interesting. They talked about God. Yeah. But Dad was angry about it. Yes. Yeah. And a lot of people on earth are, as you know, mm. angry about God. And if you think about it, even you not have been feeling that God's not existing and there must be a reason why you feel that way. Yeah, because I started to take on more of Dad's opinion. Of course, mm. yeah. Dad felt betrayed by this whole concept. Yes. And he was very angry with Mum. Yes. Know? She kept on... She kept on being religious and Dad didn't want her to. And yeah, and, and she became very hard on him. Yeah. In the name of religion. Religion. So she'd use it as a as a spike. Yeah. As mm. a tool to control him. Yeah. And you felt sorry for dad and I felt sorry for dad and then you wanted more of dad's approval than mum's and so you accepted a lot of dad's beliefs. Hmm. So I, yes. Mm, I, I see. Does that make sense? Yes. You see what I'm saying? How it's so easy to accept certain beliefs emotionally because we have an emotional attachment to the person who's giving us those beliefs. So every time I worked with a person on earth, yep. I was also creating another feeling within me. Yes. And what's that feeling? Of worth. It was giving me it's giving feelings of... A feeling of value. Value, yeah. That, that, that I had some importance, I could do something. That you were this. helping somebody. Mm. Yeah. And I had a meaning in this life. Yes. And, and I put to you and to your whole group, in fact, that you've yet to discover the meaning of your new life. And this is something that John and Pauline can show you, right? There is a very, very large universe out there of which you've only seen a very small part, right? See, I know, I know that they want to help people. Yeah. So does that mean that there's some feelings within me that I want to do that? Yeah, of course. You wouldn't have been trying to help people heal on earth without you having feelings that you wanted to help people. Can you see that? But wouldn't that be sufficient to provide me with all the meaning I need in life? Certainly, but it's not providing you with all the truth about the universe. You see, to help a person truly, you need to provide them with the truth. Right, I see. And you've not yet discovered all of the truth. And so it's very, very hard for you then to share what, all of the truth because you don't know it yourself. See, hmm. so you've discovered the truth 
that you are speaking of mm. for yourself, individually, as a person. As an experience. As it's an experience. It's a personal experience I've been through. So you know what, what's your purpose on in life? Yes. I don't know why I'm anger. I'm angry about that. I don't know why. Well, because there's probably some sadness inside of yourself about not knowing your own purpose. Does that make sense? And every time we feel anger, it's because we're denying the underlying, we're afraid of the underlying feeling. You know, it's hard. You spend a hundred years of your life mm -hmm. to learn that you don't know anything about well, your real self other than... You do know a few things. I know a few things, but... I've, I've, I feel that I've attached I, so much things to it and it's not as worthy of it anymore. Yeah. But can I say something to you about that? Everybody usually who passes from this earth feels the same way at some point. What, the disappointment? Yeah. Because, you see, the problem is on the earth is there's not much truth available to the earth. And there's very few people on the earth who really want to hear the truth. And as a result, the majority of people pass over into the spirit world without knowing the truth. And they only discover the truth many hundreds, sometimes years later. And then it makes them firstly feel like all of that hundred years was a bit of a waste of time. Yeah, it's, I could have been doing so many other things. We could, we could. And this is the reason why it's so important to discover the truth. Because every person who discovers the truth will be able to share it. And every person who shares it will be able to reduce the number of people who experience this kind of pain about not knowing. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does make sense. But that's... How many people on earth know this truth? Well, there's a lot of people that think they know it. Yes. <laughs> as you've as seen, I've met. As you've met. But there's very few people at this stage who actually know it. Because to know it, you've got to receive some of God's love, actually receive some of God's love. And as you've seen, a person who's received some of God's love has a unique brightness about them that is completely different to any other person. So that's the process of learning. And the process of learning the truth is dependent upon your reception of love. And your reception of love is dependent upon your willingness to remove all of the blockages inside of you that prevents that love from flowing into you. Hmm. Does that make sense to you? It does. It's a bit of a twisty yeah. situation. It is a bit of a twisty situation. So, so what we're really saying, though, is that we need to be humble to our own feelings mm -hmm. and see the feelings that stop us from receiving God's love. But how would I see this if it's taken you and the others to tell me what I don't know about myself? Well, there's always people around who can assist you always people around who can assist you, but they have to wait until you want to be assisted. Oh. Does that make sense? Yes. That's one of the laws of love, isn't it, really, if you think about it? Mm. You don't want to force a person to do something that they don't really feel like doing. Not only if they invite. Correct. Mm. And you know that's the case, and that's how you've been engaging your healing on earth, right? Yeah, only if the person comes to a person yeah. to be healed. Yes. So, so the same applies to you. Right. You can only be healed through this process, if you like, with God, if you have a desire to know about it and a desire to do it. So what do you call these people? Are they healers or...? The people who are in front of you? Yes. I would just call them normal people like you and I. I'm just a normal person. John's just a normal person. But we've been transformed by something. And that something is God's love. Does that make sense to you? So God's love is not only love, it's also a substance, an emotion that flows into your soul and tra changes you. And that probably brings me to the experiment that I wanted to show you. Okay. Is that okay with you? Yes. Now, um, and maybe what we can do just to help allay some of your fears about these experiments mm -hmm. is to have an illustration of some other people doing it for you, if you like. Hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So perhaps what we'd like to do is just ask Pauline for a moment if she could just go to a quieter place, so that, but a place where you can still see her mm -hmm. and feel a longing for God's love in her heart. Say that again? 
she can go to a place where you can still see her. Yes. But if she can feel a longing for God's love in her heart, in other words, she desires God's love inside of herself mm. as a feeling. And I want you to observe what happens. Wow. What did you notice this happening? There's this light that comes to her. Yeah. And where does it come to her? Straight into her from the top. Yeah. From the top. From somewhere comes. else. Yeah. And oh. you can't see where its source is. No, I don't know where it is. Yeah. But she's crying. She's crying, yeah. She's just crying about us. Yeah. 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 It's funny, she's crying. I don't know why it touches me. Yeah. Yeah. It's the love she has for us. And for at the, the same time, she receives this other love. That's right. Yeah, she's got a lot of love for you. She would never have asked you to come without feeling love for you. Right? Now, if we ask John to do the same thing, but it might be a bit harder for you to observe. So what we're going to ask John to do is go a long way away just so that you can't even see him but you'll see the brightness that comes to him once he lets himself do this because he has to be his true self to do it. And it's okay if you have to close your eyes from it. Or... He's making us all feel awkward, <laughs> including Pauline. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that's the same love that's coming to yeah. him. Yeah. That's from God too. But he has more of it, you said. He has more of it in his soul already, yes. And that's why he's much, much brighter than Pauline. So there's an amplification of it. That's correct. Yeah. And how far away did he have to go? Oh, he was well past the moon. Yeah. I could hardly see him. Yeah. But he's so bright, he's much larger than the actual... See, what God's love does is it transforms the soul. So when you, were, when you were first arrived on earth, you know, when you were conceived, your soul, you, you had a spirit body and a physical body created by your mum and dad during conception, and you had a soul, a, half a soul attached to that body, right? So you mean, you, hold on, yep. you said the love transformed the soul. Yep. You didn't say transform the spirit body. Correct. So that light that was coming to them, yes, is going into their soul, and and what well, and comes out to their spirit body. Correct. Mm. That makes sense to you so far. Yep. Okay. Yep. So there's something else. I. Yep. So so this love enters, right? And but but let's go back to the beginning when you were conceived. So I was conceived. End up with you two a, bodies. Two bodies and and a half of a soul. Half of a soul. Half of a soul is what you are. Mm -hmm. right? And then what happened was that you started growing inside the womb initially, and then you were born and then you continued to grow. Mm -hmm. Is that not what happened? Yes. Okay. I see that happen with you people. Saw the, you can now see the process with your spirit body, so you can see the spirit body of a child that's conceived, Yep. although you find it difficult to see. You only see it as a very like glassy or outline type of shape. Yeah. It, because they're brighter than you are in their condition. They have less damage, and so they are therefore brighter. Yes. All right? And then if you notice, if, if, if Pauline can give you a picture of what happened to her soul after she was conceived, and then as she lived her life on earth. Can you see what happened? She went worse. She got darker. Yes. And this is a normal thing. But it was quite quick. It was quite quick because it normally happens in the first few years because we absorb all of the unloving beliefs and untruthful beliefs from our family or our environment. Mm, the energy flows into it. The energy flows into the soul and then it affects the two bodies. Mm, but it comes from both parents. It comes from both parents, that's correct. Not mm. from just the mother, mm. but from both mum and dad. Mm. Yeah. So by the time a child is six or seven years of age... Mm. You can it's see they're already... Like a normal child, what they currently look like. Yeah, you can see them quite clearly now. You guys mm. can see them when you're visiting the earth. You can see the child at that age and you can see they already have a lot of damage by that age. Does that make sense? Mm. So, that one, so their growth, their nourishment is not very nice. 
No, it's they're not, not being really nourished. They're not they? really being loved. No, it's a it's a it's a degrading process that occurs. Unfortunately, mm. currently, it doesn't have to be this way. Mm. Now, when Pauline started to learn about God's love, where was she? In, in on earth or or in the spirit world? Where was she? She had a concept of God when yes. she was on earth. A God that was an entity? An entity, yes. Yeah. She actually believed there was a God, yeah. a physical person. Yeah. She didn't develop much. But she received a little bit of love from God while on earth. Yes. Yep. And, and can you see what happened when she received it? she show you a picture of that now? Mm. She didn't know at, the, at that time. She didn't know, no. But she was brighter. She got a little bit brighter, yes. Mm. But that never left her. No, it never leaves you. Okay. Hmm. Then, when did she next, when was the next time she found out about it? When she passed. Yeah, what happened then? She was, con she was overwhelmed by meeting a person. Yeah. Who did she meet? She met her guide. Yeah. And explained to her that the things that were true. Yeah. Yeah. And that she could receive more of things like that. Yeah. And learn all so many things. Yeah. And she wasn't resistant to it. That's right. So she decided to try an experiment. Mm. Can she show you what the experiment was? Mm. She, she wanted to love. Yeah, just like she showed you just now. Yeah. What she showed you was she wanted to love. She wanted to love you, but she wanted to receive the love from God. And what happened? She cried immensely. She cried a lot. Mm. Yeah. And the love was coming and to her. And the love came to her. And then things started shifting, changing. Yeah, things around her started changing and her soul changed. You see how her spirit body got brighter. Her spirit body got brighter. Mm -hmm. The chakras changed. Yeah. Energy flowed Energy differently. Energy flowed differently. They reversed themselves in certain ways. That's correct. She became younger. She became younger. She became healed of a lot of things that she had problems with. Mm. Can but you she see? says she also there were many things she didn't want to know about. Correct. Yep. And so on those particular things, she didn't become healed. Mm. Okay. But she understood things. It cemented things that she had felt yep. all along. And she knew that as being true. As being true because she's now had a personal experience of it. Mm. Yep. And she actually believed, truly believed, that there is a God. Yeah. And there is this love. Yeah. Oh, this is beautiful. Yeah, it is beautiful. Now, that's the same process that I've had to engage and John's had to engage. And you learnt this when you are on earth. Yeah. So what happens? I don't understand. You say you do, but I'm not aware of this soul that mm -hmm. does this. Mm -hmm. I think of myself as me. Correct. The spirit body. Yep. Which I, I, on earth I only knew myself as a physical yeah. existence of myself. Can you see that in itself should tell you something? Because on earth you only viewed yourself as a physical person, the person you could see. And, and then when you went to the spirit world, you saw the spirit body for the first time. And which so, which and now I preclude that there must be something else that So you're what aware I'm suggesting, of. yeah, is that there is another part of you that you can't see yet. But there will be a time in your future development where you'll be able to see it, just like there's been a time in your future development from Earth where you could see your spirit body. But how, how is it possible that that little embryo gets created, mm -hmm. so the soul gets created at the same time? No. No? No, the soul is created by God, not by the parents. At, at conception? No, the soul is created many, many, many years before conception. And the soul waits in a, what you would call a sort of a state of suspended animation, I suppose you could call it, in terms of your own understanding, mm -hmm. and waiting for a chance to split and incarnate. So you're saying I'm much older than I really am? Well, the soul is, but you were, you were only first conscious when you were conceived. Well, but I wasn't conscious of myself as a soul. No, I still am not. Correct. 
so that, but there are things you were conscious of. You were conscious, for example, you began to be conscious is probably the better way of putting it, of your own identity, of, yeah, your, okay. of your own individualization. Yeah. You came to see yourself as an individual. Yes, as I grew, yes. As you grew. Mm. But the first seed of that process began at conception. Okay. I so God that. created these souls and they were all waiting for conception. And once conception occurs, they split into two. One conceives with one and one, the other half conceives with another couple. And, mm. and at the time of conception, the soul starts its process or its journey of awareness. The soul does. Yeah. But how come the soul did not create that connection with me so that I'm aware of its existence? It, it is you. It is me. It is you. So as I think of myself, I'm actually thinking of myself as a soul. Yes. But what you look at, your, phys your spiritual body, is not your soul. It's just an appendage of the soul. It is a bit confusing. Yeah, maybe. But in time you'll come to see why it's made that way. But how do I become more aware of myself soul. as a soul as opposed to just myself as, as existing in this form? Very good question. And the way you become more aware is two, two ways. One, becoming humble to all of your feelings. Oh. Does that make sense? Mm, there's a... That's why you've been blocked to your soul. And I haven't wanted to know what... What your real are. feelings are. Right? And all your feelings are stored in your soul. And all your memories are stored in your soul. Your, or everything is stored in your soul, in fact. And the other way to help you come to know yourself is by receiving some of God's love. Because as you do that, all of the, you could say, all of the impurities in your soul that other people put there or that you put there through your choices get removed. And in the end, you become the pure person that God created you to be. So you can do it either way? Well, you can do it either way. There's one way, which the first way in terms of terminology, we are in the spirit world, we sometimes refer to that as the natural love way, which is developing the love that's inside of you for other people. Mm -hmm. And then the second way is the way John and Pauline and myself have done it, and that is by receiving God's love. Can I ask, these beautiful people who are here, mm -hmm. they obviously have chosen the first path. Yes, uh, the one about to receiving God. God's love. Correct. The people who I've met mm -hmm. who are on earth who talk about it, mm -hmm. do they have any awareness of their soul? Not really yet, no. The reason why is they still really, they, they believe themselves to know things that they've yet to experience. What about the, the dark spirits who are with them? Do they have an awareness of no. their own soul? No, they don't. So why do they, they talk, talk about, about it? They talk about it, but they don't have an awareness of it. Right, okay. You see, an awareness requires a soul-based awareness. And if you haven't developed your soul, then of course you have no soul-based awareness. And you've developed this. Mm. So what... Well, how do, I, how do you know that? Y yeah, how, how do you know it? Like, how would you... How do you know it from what I've just demonstrated to you? Mm. Oh. Can you see what I'm saying? Yes. What happened with John? When he connected with God and... You yeah. saw the brightness of his soul when he, couldn't you? Mm. And then what happened with Pauline? Same thing. Same thing. What happened with me when I did the same thing? Same thing. Same thing. What happened with these other people? Not the same thing. No. They're not connecting in that way. No, they're not. They're not able to illustrate any of this. No. All they're doing is connecting, as you've point, correctly pointed out, connecting to other spirits and getting their addictions met by these other spirits and everybody gets darker in the process. That's not what's happening to John, myself, or Pauline. Hmm. I do not wish to learn a lot more of what they do. Yeah. I'd rather learn a lot more of this. Yes. So what I'm going to do is propose to you something. Okay. An experiment, if you wish. Mm -hmm. right? And the experiment is this. To attempt to try to do the same thing that Pauline and John and myself have demonstrated to you, and to allow yourself to feel everything you feel while it happens. So what comes first? Do you attempt to feel your soul first or do you no, attempt to...? No, all you need to do is feel your desire to receive some of, love, some of this love from God. Feel your desire to receive it. Develop a desire if you don't have one. If you can remember on earth sometimes, you might have had a pure feeling to be hugged. 
Yeah, see, I, I find this difficult to do. Yeah. And you, you did you did state to me earlier, did you not? Yeah. That my feelings about God it may prevent. Correct. And so what's the feelings that are coming up about God? I feel like I'd like to have received love, yes. Yeah. Divine love, but I don't feel that it's part of God. Correct. And this is going to be a big block. So how do we address this block? Yes, how do we address this? So where does this feeling about God come from? Well, it comes from, from Dad and Mum. Mm-hmm. What, what about Mum? Mum sort of taught a punishing... Mum, Mum's said a lot of things in the name of God. Yeah, which were not right. Yeah, and, not loving. and Dad got disgusted by the whole concept and he said, well, if that's your God, you can keep it. Yeah, yep. And so... What, so I feel that God doesn't exist and if he does, he's only... He's only angry. He's only angry and... And punishing and whatever else, right? Mm. And he only does nasty stuff. All right, so what I'm going to do is ask you for a moment to have a different concept of God. Just for a moment. And this concept of God is that God is more loving than the most loving person you've ever met. A person. And that God wants to know you and wants to love you. And in fact, God already does know you and already does love you. It's just that you didn't know that. That's making me a bit sad. Yeah. And just allow yourself to feel, if that's the God that exists, allow yourself to feel a longing for having some of that love from that God. Okay. The reason why you have to stop is because you're afraid of getting overwhelmed emotionally. And every time you have a fear of being overwhelmed emotionally, it's like you're putting the brakes on it, you know, like you're stopping it. But it's different, like, mm -hmm. I need to gather myself for a bit. Yeah, that's okay. Just gather yourself. How's that possible? I was imagining, mm -hmm. and then... The feeling came. Yeah. And the feeling came from outside of you. Yes. And it entered you. So mm. what does that tell you? What does that feeling tell you? There is this potential love. Yeah. And when you conceived God as an entity. Yeah, I actually thought of it yeah, a person. As a person. Then you received some of this love. That only could love. Yeah. Could not do anything else. Yeah. And do you know what you learnt in that process already? That God exists and God is an entity. God's beautiful. And God's beautiful and God loves you. And God wants to respond to your desires that are pure. That's a lot you've learnt in just... But I also felt something else. Yeah. I imagine God was a woman. Yeah. Not like my mum. Yeah. Yeah. But he wasn't a man. Yeah. And I still got this love. Yeah. Wow, this is amazing. Yeah. God's amazing. God will always overwhelm you, always surprise you. Always. Always. Yeah. So, never never so, going to be the time when you can, don't connect to God and be surprised. <laughs> Oh, I just need to go. <laughs> well, can I make, <clears throat> maybe just make one more suggestion to you before you go? <clears throat> yes. That little experiment that you tried, mm -hmm. you could feel the change in you, can't you? Yes, I can. Yeah? So I, you can feel that something happened. I mean, I can see if the things are changing. Yeah. Energetically, <clears throat> things are different. And you've observed through observing Pauline, observing John, observing myself, that, that obviously it's very different to what people are talking about. It is so different. Yeah. There, there is no correlation to what they are saying. No. So what that teaches you is a few things, doesn't it? It teaches mm. you first that God does have this love to give you 
and God loves, God wants to love, does love you and, and wants to give you this love. But it also teaches you that there's a whole heap of things out there that are fake and facade. And just because a person uses the words, it doesn't mean that they know the meaning of them. Hmm. I've been like that too. I've said things that I have no idea about. Correct. So we can have compassion for people who do that. And God can have compassion for me. Of course. Oh, that's strange, actually. I receive some love yeah. no matter what, how I feel. Correct. See, this demonstrates that God has compassion and God's love responds to your pure desire. All you needed was a pure desire and a willingness to let go of anything that was in the way. That's all you needed. Yeah, that's beautiful too. It's, it wasn't much that was needed and yet there's a large amount of benefit that comes from that. So everything is learned through love. Yeah. I mean, you can learn through pain, but it doesn't feel the same It doesn't way. feel that good, learning through pain. No. And the beauty of this is that you discovered some truths. You discovered the truth that God exists, that God is an entity, that God loves you, that God cares about you and wants to give you love. You discovered the truth that just because people claim things to be, it doesn't mean they are. You've discovered a lot of truths in just a very short period of time. Yeah, and you've also answered my question without having it directly answering it. Correct. So God's love really heals, not us. Correct. Mm -hmm. So you remember right, right back in the beginning, the original question asked was, what was this different healing modality? Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying is not a modality. It's actually God through the operation of God's love that actually does all of the healing. And not only does the healing, but actually once you've completely healed, God's love continues to transform your soul. So now I have so many questions about why I exist. Of course. Is it just for this purpose? To receive God's love? Mm, and to keep growing. Well, the primary reason why God created you was so that you could experience the joy of God's love. This is so hard to even ask. You know, my heart's feeling. Yeah. It's beating more than I ever have. Yeah. God just wants me to have joy. God wants to, you to experience the joy of receiving God's love and understanding how powerful and wonderful that is. And then also to then make choices and decisions with your life that's in harmony with that love. Oh, this... But other than that, God would like you to do anything you want. <laughs> so I can still do things that I want to do? Of course, as long as they are in harmony with... With love. And? And I need to discover what they are. Correct. You need to discover the truth of them, don't you? Can you see? Mm. But now it's not, I have it's the no capacity good sharing to... something with somebody else that's not true. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. That's pretty. It's a lot of wiseness in that. Yeah. Yeah. You can feel we're all quite happy. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens when you receive some of God's love, right? Hmm. Yeah. We're all amazed. Yeah. And it's a completely different thing than what people think it is. See, people who think they know and don't know have never experienced, so they can't teach you anything. No. It's only the people who know and have experienced that can teach you something. If you think about it, you know, John was taught by someone, I was taught by somebody, Pauline was taught by somebody. Mm. Irrespective of the amount of love they've received, mm -hmm. they can still teach. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Just to be able to learn that you can receive God's love. is an amazing thing, isn't it? Oh. And can you see Paula's motivation for bringing you, Pauline's motivation of bringing you here? Was she, that she wanted you to understand what you were missing out on. She just wanted me to share the same gift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's an expression of her love to you. Yeah. Mm. That's very hard to talk. Mm. Whilst you cry. Well, yeah, you've got a lot of feelings to feel and it's okay to go and feel them, that's fine. Mm. We love you and, and if you want to come back and talk again, that's fine. But you've got plenty of people who want to help you mm. in the spirit world there with you. Now, some of you don't realise it yet, but you're ready to go to a different home than you've been. Well, I saw Katrina. She went. <laughs> She's gone. She's gone. <laughs> <laughs> she, moved, she moved so fast. Where's she gone? 
I don't know, she just went. She certainly has Someone can't appear in front of her. Yep. She hasn't gone back to Earth. No. She's gone to another location in the spirit world. We just felt something from her <clears throat> and, and that was it, she was gone. Yeah. <sighs> and many of you will have to allow yourself to feel these feelings, you know. There's going to be some feelings of confusion sometimes and sometimes you're going to feel angry like you just did when your conversation with me and sometimes you're going to feel afraid, mm. sometimes you're going to feel sad. How come we're not moving like Katrina is? Well, because you're still talking to me. Mm. But let's, if you want, how about I invite some spirits to... For, for everyone. For everyone to come along. And, and they're going to just take you to your homes. Now, some of you might not be that happy with your homes initially, but you know you can always ask for more of God's love and you will always progress beyond that place. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm. Yeah, I understand what you mean. I can see, I can feel different things in me that I never yeah. wanted to know. Yeah, you can feel some angry emotions and some yeah. frustrations and some shame. Not some, quite a lot. Yeah, and this is what God's love does too, is it exposes to us what is the problem mm. that's, that's preventing our experiencing more of God's love. So it's quite clever really, isn't it? So mm. But I'm, I'm feeling like I've been robbed in a way. By life. By life. On earth. Mm. That yeah. This has not been taught. No. No, it's sad, isn't it, that it's not being taught on earth. But the very people who talk about God don't even know this. Correct. And that's very sad, isn't it? Like People like your mother who should have known about all this talk about God all the time and they don't know about any of it. So mm. That's sad, isn't it? It's very sad. Yeah. And that's something that well, the reason why I've returned to earth is I want to try to remedy. Oh, well, it's... <laughs> we've... We thought anything that I could say to you, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> yeah. I don't think anyone needs to suffer on earth. No, no, there doesn't need to be as much suffering on earth. No. And the suffering, as you've seen, continues beyond earth, unfortunately, for many people. Yeah, it continues. Mm. <laughs> to, I, I thought that everything I felt would, would disappear. I yeah. mean, I thought I would disappear yeah. to start with. Yeah. But when I discovered that I wasn't, yeah. I thought that all my feelings would disappear, but they're all still there. Correct. So it does carry with you. Yeah, and unless you're willing to let them go. So these people will teach me a lot more about this soul and they how the teach soul you grows. immense amounts of information that you've not known before. Mm. And as long as you're willing to be open to truth, remember that was one of the things we first mentioned, the importance of understanding what is the truth. That is going to be an issue. Yeah. And but they not, will remind me, won't they'll they? They'll remind you and also remember every time you're afraid of the truth, you're just afraid of what the errors are that will be exposed really. Okay. You don't need to be afraid of truth because the truth is always beautiful. And to receive the extent of love that they've received, yeah. I need to just keep wanting it. That's right. Just like you try, tried. Just like you tried in your experiment. And you if did. I get stuck, just use my imagination. Yeah, that's correct. Mm. Yep. And be willing to actually feel some of the feelings that stop you from wanting it. It's hard not to. It comes up. It comes up, yeah. Mm. yeah. So that's a consequence. That's a, that's a consequence. But mm. it's also a good thing, isn't it? Yes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> that's fantastic. No. Thank you for the gift. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Mm. I feel you, you have healed me whether you like me calling <laughs> you or not, that or not. I, I can't heal you. It's God's love. Correct. Mm. Yeah. All I can do, if I, if I was a spirit, all I could do is just muck around with your energies just like you've been doing, and that won't permanently heal you. No, that doesn't do anything now. No. God's love permanently heals and you. I, actually, that is very true. I, whatever I've done with people's energies has not done anything to what I've just felt. Correct. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And this is a truth that's unknown really on earth still, isn't it? Mm. You can see that in your entire investigations of 50 years or so after you've passed, you've not learned this from the earth at all. Mm. Yeah, I can. I'd like to go and experiment. There's yeah. so many people here. Yeah. And they have many more discussions. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But thank you. It's my pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for all the warmth. Yeah, it's my pleasure too. And your persistence <laughs> in dealing with me. Yeah. It must have been hard, sorry. No, you haven't been very hard at all to deal with. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't know why I was so scared to talk to you in the first <laughs> place. Well, because I remember you were afraid of finding out some truth. Mm, so, but, uh, but has the truth been good or bad? It's been good. <laughs> I don't understand why I fear the truth, but I'll get to the bottom of it. Well, that, that will also relate to what happened in your childhood. Okay. Does that so, make sense? Because on earth we're taught a lot of things about truth that we should be afraid of it. So all that, all that energy I'd seen in the embryo yep. as it grew, yep. they're the things I need to go and feel. That's right. Amongst other things. Yeah. There's things that, there's two types of feelings that you will have. One type of feelings are about the things that were done to you mm. by other people. And then the second type of feelings will be about the things you did to other people. Okay. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. Did you notice that when um, I displayed that brightness to you, that there were lots and lots of spirits all of a sudden came? Yes. Yeah. There's so much. There's so many things that transpire that I don't say to you because you're aware of it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's, it, it, is, it is truly remarkable yeah. that something so simple has been forgotten. Yeah. It is. And not available to others. Yeah. That it will transform everyone if they knew this. Yeah. And it's only the ignorance of truth that causes them to not know. Mm. Whether you're aware of it or not, mm. true ignorance. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of people who don't think they're ignorant who are still ignorant, <laughs> mm. unfortunately, as you've seen. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you. There's, as you know, there's, there is no time to waste because <laughs> there's just so much time. There's so much time, yeah. <laughs> mm. So yeah. I'd like to learn a lot more and experiment. Yeah, enjoy yourself doing so. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for all your gifts. It's a pleasure. Mm. And yeah. thank you. Thank you to Pauline. Yeah, mm. for bringing you here. Yeah, she says she'll actually accompany us. Yeah. She's got many things to show us yeah. that she discovered. And also John, who's in a very, very bright condition, mm. will be able to teach you many things that Pauline can't. Mm. So you, there'll be times when she'll probably want to call on him to show you some things. Yeah, he said there'll be bigger groups he'd like us to attend to. Correct. Mm. Yeah. There are other things, other yeah. people yes. he'd like to introduce us yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. So and there are different places that we'll... That you've not been to yet. That we've not been to, but yeah. not necessarily our home. Correct. But just to, what did he say? He says, to kickstart our imagination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll be John. He's a funny guy. <laughs> he is a funny guy. Mm. And he's going to teach me things about males that I don't know. Yes, because there's a lot of things. That's why I remember I asked you in this conversation some questions about how many men were with you. Mm. Because that's an indication that there are some blockages with men. Mm. And religion. He said there's many things about religion. Yes. That I need to learn yeah. and feel about. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So there's a wide world out there, as the saying goes. Here's much gratitude for you. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So he sends a, his love. They yeah. all send their love. Yeah. And Pauline's excited, she said, to have met you, to talk to you this way. Yeah. Mm. yeah. A lot of our sisters have other people here at the moment. Of course, yeah. Mm. And, and I understand they're all engaging in those conversations now. And, mm. and there's someone that they said, I need to meet. Yes. That I'd like to meet. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm very interested to see how things go from now on for you. Mm. If I get a chance to come back. Yeah, certainly do so. Even if it's just to relay some of your experiences. Mm, I'd like that. Yeah. Mm. Katrina says she'd like to come over and do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's a funny. <laughs> I wish I could be more playful like she is. Yeah. Mm. yeah. You um, will be. Thank you. No thank worries. You. Goodbye. Pleasure. Bye. So is there any questions you'd like to ask about that yourself, Andrew? Was it fairly plain for you what's going on there? No, there's a lot of things for me <laughs> <laughs> that I need to feel about. Uh, uh, no, there is a lot of questions. Just I was looking at Pauline in a different way as well. Yeah. I don't really know her. I don't know my guide that well Yeah. and what she's attempting to teach me. Yeah, and can you see that there's a sort of a pattern there with women that you don't really know women very well? Mm. You don't ask them much about themselves and how they feel. and mm. yeah. I did see a pattern this morning that I was feeling about that due to the level of control that I want, I haven't wanted to feel the hurt yep. that I've, yep. of how oppressed I feel by being controlled by mum. Yeah. And so I was just allowing myself to feel a bit about that. Yeah. And at the same time then 
Well, it causes you to keep women at a bit of a distance. Yeah, and then and that's one reason why you have Pauline with you. Yeah. yeah, and I don't know whether it's truth or not, but it's almost like certain statements were coming to me um, that that's precluded me from having a relationship with Jane. That's yeah. heavy, precluded me from that's right. from having a relationship with God and, yeah. and learning. There was another thing that came to me. It was um, just getting truth. It's one of the reasons why I fear um, receiving truth because I want to control not feeling the fears that I feel and yeah. the other emotions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. So you can see that the lady um, who was that? What was her name again? Um, yeah. Philippa. Yes. Philippa. That's right. Um, you can see in some ways she has similar feelings to yourself. Mm. In the sense of wanting to, like, keep the truth under control yeah. to a degree, so that she didn't have to feel certain things yeah, as much as I can be or yeah. think I can be. Yeah, and the reality is, we're always capable of bearing a lot more than what we believe we're capable of bearing. Mm. God created our soul to have an immense capacity to to deal with information and feelings. There's also a lot of mistrust yeah. in the entire process. Yeah, that. You do have a soul, and yeah. how you really connect to it, and yeah, hmm. yeah, and this is where it's so important to get away from the sort of new agey techniques, if you like, and into just okay, my soul is my emotional feelings. It is how I feel, you know. So that's the fastest way for me to connect to my soul is to connect to my feelings, hmm. connect to my emotions, connect to my desires, connect to my passions. Then I'll know myself far better. Yeah. And also I'll know what's real, what's not real far more, but also I have the ability to feel more about receiving God's love and things like that as well. Mm. Mm. Just to learn about love. Yeah. Mm. yeah. No, it's, it's quite a beautiful experience Yeah. just to feel. I mean, she was crying a lot more than... Yes, of course. I mean, I don't expre we, express know, she, her. She would be crying a lot more now too. Mm. There's a lot more for her to feel. She was just uh, conscious of our conversation, so she... Yeah. And she, I got the feeling that she wasn't going to go straight to the spirit world. A few of the ladies have got um, a bit more discussion they need. Um, well, to they, they have not yet worked through the reasons why they feel so attached to earth, hmm. which are a lot about actually receiving emotions that they're doing a good thing. There's a feeling in them that they, they need other people to sort of appreciate the things that they've done. And there's another addiction of mine. Yeah. Yeah, the, what I put worth in. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So it's the same with most of your channeling. You'll find that um, that there'll always be co-relations between the, the feelings and experiences generally of the person mm. and your own emotions. And, and, and that enables you to actually feel and highlight what those emotions are inside of yourself better. It's, it's, it's remarkable you say that because that's one of the questions I really wanted to find out a lot more about because I'm starting to have a feeling about that, that due to the level of my control, I haven't wanted to participate in channelings, which is what I want to do because yeah. I'm finding that's more exciting to me more, a lot more now. Yeah, you know it's a soul-based desire sort of thing. Yeah. yeah, but if I do channeling, it exposes stuff. Correct. Which so I don't want to feel. Fear. So and there's a fear. Yeah. It's, it's just, yeah. And that's why I've been encouraging you for years to go down this track because I know that it's going to help you mm. address a lot of your fears. Yeah. yeah. No, you actually have. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for being a friend. <laughs> my friend, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how you define what a friend is, but um, yeah, it's, it is not what I've known it to be. Yeah. 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 yeah we would probably like to thank our audience for listening in on our conversation. Um, yeah. I, we've been fairly self-involved I suppose in the conversation but that's good mm. and uh, it's been wonderful I think to d demonstrate some more truths to you through the aspect of channeling some material from mm. a, a lovely spirit who was earthbound Philippa mm. and who uh, was willing to find out some more truth about herself so that's wonderful so thanks for your time Anto and mm, thank you. thanks for Igor again and for, for recording our information for us thank you <laughs>